Well, welcome back to Base Camp, WNC. It's been a while. I got hours of this stuff on my phone, and I got to get it downloaded while I'm supposed to be resting. So I'm going to be trying to get a bunch of videos out here in the next week or so and give the, the gang something to look at and comment on and give the hater something to pick apart. But what we're on a project, we're pumping spring water up a hill, and it's a bunch of flow. This guy's got an Airbnb set up he's building and a bunch of glamping campsites. So in this piece of pipe is a three-horsepower pump doing like 38 gallons a minute, and he's got some hills to pump it up. Uh, so I'm going to take you along for the build. This is just sticking this pump. I'm going to take it all apart. I'm going to show you the pump in here and all the check valves and the fittings that are coming out. The purpose of putting this thing in is to make the water draw in this end, go past the motor to cool it, and go in the in intake through the pump, come out this end and go up out of the tank. I'm going to set all the pressure tanks up. I'm going to show you putting all the pressure tanks together. We get out there on the site. I'll pull that video and I'm going to show you putting it all together and wiring it up, doing all that kind of good stuff. So let me take you along and I'll take you along for this build on this thing. This one here is a 350 gallon tank. I just happen to have sitting here on the yard. So if, this if that pump was mounted vertical in this tank, the intake would be right there. So out of a 350-gallon tank, you would lose about 125 gallons that you would never be able to pump out of this tank. But the tank is only three and a half feet in diameter, so you couldn't lay it down. So when you go to select a tank, you know, it's all what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Well... In this instant, you got to know what tank you're going to use for the pump. So you look at what kind of pump you're looking at. Maybe I'll do a video on pump selection as far as horsepower head, which is the actual ability for the pump to lift vertical feet, and then for distance. So this tank right here isn't really conducive for a deep well pump because it just isn't big enough across the bottom. This is actually the tank that pump will be sitting in. There'll actually be two of them inside this tank. And this thing is seven and a half feet wide. So to put a five foot pump across the bottom, we'll be fine. Well, let me go over the whole thing. On the end of the pump right here, that's an inch and a quarter thread, which is what this bushing is, one inch, cloak snipple that'll go in there, a check valve so that once the pump pushes all the water this way, it can't come back down and drain the pressure off. And then this is where we're going to screw this in, and this is where the pipe is. This is one inch uh, PEX pipe that's going up from there up. How we built the caps for this thing to go in this PVC slide we have an inch and a quarter hole drilled in the center. That is actually where this will be sticking out through the whole thing, kind of like that. So it'll get a bushing in the pipe, close snip valve, this. It'll come through this valve I have two holes here, one here, and basically this is what I've got. I've got this white nylon tape. This is what you're going to pull it out with. And let me stick this thing kind of together and I'm going to show you what I... So what we have here is this bushing is going to screw in there. Now, I have this white nylon tape. This is what we're going to use to pull the pump if you need to pick it up. You don't want to pull on the power cord. You want to pull on this pull cord. And I have a piece of conduit it runs through. And then I have two holes. You're going to see these two holes here on this cap. 
That is so when we have it together, we can pull it up tight and tie it off. And what that's going to do with that and the piece of conduit, it'll keep this thing from wiggling back and forth and cutting this thing. And this piece of conduit will go right there. So let me stick this thing together and I'm going to show you kind of what I'm talking about. There it is. So here it is. This piece of pipe, this ties on that pole for the pump to hold it tight. This piece of gray flex pipe, I got this conduit I just got stuck in here. That'll protect this power cord. And then all of this slides down this piece of four inch PVC pipe. And what I have in there is these two runners glued in. This is just a strip of plastic cut on a table saw. And the pump's gonna sit right here on the bottom, right here, and be in there. I got the top mark, so once I got it together, I know where it is. And the pump's gonna sit in there. So let me go ahead and slide this pump in. Then I'm gonna show you the stand for this thing. Okay. With the pump slid in, and that thing there I got marked top, so I know where the runners are on this pump. And every pump's a different size. You gotta check the diameter of the pump and whether this will fit, or you gotta go to a bigger size pipe. I mean, all this is dependent on this size pump. I took the cap, marked the center line, so the electric cord's pulling straight right to the cord. And then my tie-off strap here pulls right to the tie-in. I took some plain old black electrical tape and taped that so this doesn't come apart. And what all this is for, believe it or not, and I know I forgot to mention this, is if you put this pump in the water without putting it in one of these tubes. And it doesn't matter whether it's in a tank, if you're, if you're hanging a pump off your dock and you're trying to irrigate your lawn with it and you keep having problems with the pumps burning up, the water actually has to flow. This is just like a well. It has to flow in this pipe, go across that motor and go to the inlet. And that's what cools this motor down while it's running. That's the whole purpose of putting this pump inside this thing and like you said you know i got the sun in my eyes right now there's the pump sitting in the pipe just like it would be sitting in a four inch well you're just replicating that now how i hold this thing up off the bottom of the thing i've done a couple different methods this is the last one i came up with and these are nothing but 10 pound weights off that old weight set that you bought. Used it a half a dozen times. It's been sitting in the garage or the basement floor ever since. I actually bought these at Habitat. I'll show you how I took some six inch PVC pipe and cut these holes out with a hole saw. But they'll drop over it. And then this pump, let me pick this pump up and set it in there for you. And this is what it's gonna look like. Now it does have some straps that come across here and bolt down and hold it down tight. But this way, it's about six inches up off the ground. The pump's about six inches off the bottom and it won't be sucking any sediment in. This will give it a whole six inches on the bottom of the tank. It can, it can draw sediment before the pump will start sucking it in and putting it up your line. So this is what this whole build is for. This is the pump in the tube that cools the motor, directs the flow up the thing, holds it up off the tank, and all this is homemade. They do make this stuff. It's about $600 for the weight and the stuff that holds the pump off the floor of the tank, but I actually bought these weights at uh, Habitat for two bucks a piece or three bucks a piece and uh, went from there. But I mean, a whole lot cheaper just to build. 
Okay. I'm going to show you how to build these two saddle mounts right here. And anybody that knows me that's watching this thing knows I don't throw anything away. So we're going to put this thing on a chop saw and clean up this edge. And this is an old piece of belled six inch pipe. We're going to cut it off about here. And let me go bring it back. Well, here it is. I cut up that rag in, cut the bell end off with the chop saw, measured over about halfway. And I have a, 12 inch quarter inch drill bit I'm going to drill straight down through both of them and kind of have it halfway lined up well, there it is I went through that one when I came down I kind of eyeballed the middle of the pipe and drilled through now for the fun part now we're going to take this thing right here and drill right through that piece of pipe And here it is. If you kind of do it halfway right, you end up with one piece. And not a perfect hole, but it doesn't have to be. But here's one. We'll turn it over and drill the other side. And there it is. And actually, this is a five-inch hole saw bit. But it's not perfect. So now we're going to take it, measure the middle right here, take it over to the chop saw and just cut it off. Well, there it was. I took it over, cut it off in the middle in the chop saw. That makes my two legs. And they fit on that right there. And you just take the drill out. I used two galvanized half inch bolts. We'll put a strap over that and tie it down. And that's all we're gonna do for it. It ain't going nowhere. And for doing this, I mean, it probably took longer to go find the scrap pile and the piece of junk, but uh, 10, 15 minutes. Like I said, they do sell these things and they're like $300 a piece for the brackets. They're nice plastic coated. Of course, so is that old weight set. PVC pipe ain't never gonna have any problem with it. The galvanized bolts. So there you go. Does an excellent job for a hundredth of price well thank you for watching this thing if you made it all the way to the end as usual give me your comments on the build good or bad things i left off things i should have made other ideas that people have that i did, i don't use but like i said this will be one in a bunch of them this is the uh pump right now we're going to show you putting the tank in putting it all up pressure tanks wiring it up this concludes this ep this part of the episode, so like it, share it, subscribe, tell your friends about it. I'll see you on the next one.